Welcome to the next session on the chapter Respiration in Plants. In this module, we are going to learn about aerobic respiration. What is this aerobic respiration? We know it is a complete oxidation of glucose to release end products, namely carbon dioxide, water and large amount of energy in the presence of oxygen. And that's about aerobic respiration, its definition. And where does it occur? We know it is cellular respiration and it is taking place inside the cell. When glycolysis was taking place in the cytoplasm, where will the rest of the process take place or where will it get completed? It is occurring in the mitochondria. So completion of the oxidation of glucose is taking place in the mitochondria. And we know the pyruvic acid at present after glycolysis is present in the cytoplasm. So from the cytoplasm, the pyruvic acid or pyruvate has to be transported from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria, the cell organ is called as mitochondria. So now let us learn why the mitochondria is called as the powerhouse of the cell. So let's now just look into the crucial events which is taking place in the aerobic respiration in the mitochondria. First, let us learn about the mitochondrial structure. It's a sausage structure and is having two membranes, the outer membrane and inner membrane. The inner membrane has many infoldings which is called as cristae and it encloses a fluid medium called as a matrix. So this we have learned in the cellular unit of life. Okay. So the first event taking place in aerobic respiration in the mitochondria is the oxidation of pyruvate. Not just oxidation, it's a complete oxidation of pyruvate. And it is a stepwise process uh, in which each step all the hydrogen atoms which is present in pyruvic acid is sequentially removed. Okay, And during this complete oxidation what happens and during when uh, the hydrogen atoms are removed we can see that three carbon molecules, three carbon dioxide molecules are being, are being produced. Okay, as a byproduct, three carbon dioxide molecules are produced when there is a stepwise oxidation of pyruvic acid and there is a removal. When this oxidation is taking place, there is a stepwise removal of hydrogen atom. And this process of oxidation, it is taking place in the matrix of the mitochondria. Okay, so that is where the uh, pr um, process of oxidation of pyruvic acid is taking place. Where is it taking place? It is taking place in the matrix. And the second event is passing on of electrons removed as part of hydrogen atoms. We know hydrogen atoms are removed as a result of oxidation. And when the hydrogen atoms are removed, the electrons are also removed along with it. Okay. And uh, it is finally passed on to molecular oxygen. Okay. So passing on of electrons removed as pass part of hydrogen atoms to molecular oxygen with simultaneous synthesis of ATP. Okay, there comes a synthesis of ATP when, when the electrons are finally begin, getting transferred stepwise and last it is accepted by molecular oxygen. And where is this transport of or uh, the passing of electrons, the electron transport system taking place? It is taking place in the inner membrane of mitochondria. So both the events are taking place within the mitochondria in which first oxidation of pyruvic acid is taking place in the matrix, whereas the synthesis of ATP is taking place in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So the pyruvic acid formed after glycolysis is transported into the mitochondria. And inside the mitochondrial matrix, it undergoes. And the pyruvic acid, which is present in the mitochondrial matrix, it undergoes oxidative decarboxylation. That's removal of carbon dioxide is taking place. So oxidative decarboxylation. And this is mediated by the enzyme called as pyruvate dehydrogenase. Okay, So pyruvate dehydrogenase is the enzyme which catalyzes the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A. For this oxidative decarboxylation, it also requires NAD. NAD means nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and coenzyme A. Have you heard of this coenzyme? Coenzyme is 
a non protein organic part of an enzyme without which the enzyme cannot become active so in the presence of this coenzyme a and nad plus the pyruvic acid by the with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase and the presence of magnesium ions it gets converted to acetyl coa that's acetyl coenzyme a plus carbon dioxide plus NADH plus H plus that is NAD gets reduced to NADH plus H plus and during this process what is being released one molecule of carbon dioxide is being released okay so it is a stepwise first step in which the hydrogen atoms are removed okay hydrogen atoms are removed that's called as oxidative decarboxylation okay why it's called as decarboxylation because carbon dioxide is released during this process so during this process two NADH molecules you can see two NADH molecules are produced how two NADH here we can see only one NADH when one molecule of pyruvic acid is undergoing oxidative decarboxylation one molecule of NADH is produced but how many pyruvic acids are produced after end at the end of glycolysis two pyruvic acids are produced so two pyruvic acids when it undergoes oxidative decarboxylation produces two NADH okay so acetyl CoA, this acetyl CoA then enters into the TCA cycle, or it is called as a tricarboxylic acid cycle. So initial step is the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid in the presence of NAD plus coenzyme A, and the enzyme uh, which catalyzes this reaction is pyruvate dehydrogenase in the presence of magnesium ions. It is releasing one molecule of carbon dioxide. When one molecule of uh, pyruvic acid is undergoing oxidative decarboxylation, one NADH is produced. So ultimately the net gain is 2 NADH and it is also producing acetyl-CoA and one molecule of carbon dioxide which and this acetyl-CoA enters into the TCA cycle or it is called as a tricarboxylic acid cycle. So in the next module we will be learning about the fate of acetyl-CoA which enters into the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Thank you.